Hi, welcome back to the course Foundations for Machine Learning. We are continuing to learn mathematical foundations for machine learning, especially linear algebra. So far, we looked at how matrices are essentially representations of linear transformations in two dimensional or higher dimensional spaces. And we also saw how different matrices can represent rotational transformation, shearing, or even composite transformations where rotation and shear can happen at the same time. And uh, there could be scaling up or scaling down. All of these transformations can be represented by matrices. But you must have noticed one thing and you a natural question may have uh, come to you, which definitely happened for me when I was learning this for the first time. So we always were looking at uh, square matrices. So in 2D space, we were mostly looking at two by two matrices. So if we had a matrix that looked like this, um, let's say three, two, one, four, then this is a transformation in 2D where the I vector is transformed to this position three, three, one, and the J vector is transformed to this position two, four. So this transformation, what it does to the I vector is such that the unit vector I will go to one, two, three, one over here. So this will be the new unit, new uh, equivalent of I. So the new basis vector and two, four is, is this. So is this actually, so, oh, sorry. 2, 4 is this guy. So this will be the new basis vector equivalent for J. And now any vector in the XY plane, we can represent using these new basis vectors. So this is what we saw. And if we have a matrix like this, that can be called as M. And if we have any vector V, then this creates a new transform vector. And that transform vector we can represent in terms of the new I vector, which is this I transformed. And uh, this is not necessarily a unit vector, but it's just a transformed vector and the new J vector this. So this is what we saw so far. Now, you may have a question which is very common is that what if this is not a square vector? In, in real life, you don't only deal with square vectors. You deal with uh, rectangular, uh, so, sorry, square matrices. You deal with uh, matrices that are rectangular, like non-square matrices. So uh, this lecture is about what are the transformations that can result if the matrix itself is a non-square matrix. So let me take an example of a non-square matrix. This is a three by two matrix. So you have two columns and three rows. What does this matrix do? And on what type of vectors does this matrix act? So if we go by the logic of uh, what the columns represent, we know that the first column represents the position of position where the i vector lands. The second column represents the position where the j vector lands. So this is a three by two matrix. So there are three dimensions for the new transformed i vector. There are three dimensions for the new transformed j vector. So what does this mean? What this means is <clears throat> the i vector, which was originally in the x, y, 2D space is now transformed into a 3D space because now the new I vector has the transformed I has three dimensions. It has X, Y, and Z dimensions. So X dimension is this, Y dimension is this, and Z dimension is this. The transformed J vector also has three dimensions. So what happened here is the, the, two, the two vectors I and J, which were in the X, Y, 2D plane, it, it got an additional third dimension and now you have a new plane in the 3d space what do i mean by the plane in the 3d space so what i mean by that is using these two vectors you cannot span the entire 3d space because for a spanning entire 3d space you need three vectors that are linearly independent of each other but these two vectors they are linearly independent because the i vector and j vector uh, i mean you can see that first of all they are not multiples of each other or anything they are not one scaled by a factor. So they are linearly independent. And these two vectors span some plane. Two linearly independent vectors can span some plane. Two linearly independent vectors in uh, XY planes can uh, span the entire XY, XY plane. Two linearly independent vectors in any other plane, any other 2D plane can span that entire 2D plane. Now here, in this case, you are transforming a 2D space into a 3D space, which means 
uh, the two new vectors it might look like something like this so this is the new transform di vector and new transform j vector so this plane can be spanned by these two vectors so what that means is if the new transform vector is multiplied by a scalar alpha and then you add that to the so here i'm denoting not by the cap because this is not necessarily a unit vector and then the, the new transform j vector is multiplied by a scaling factor beta you can do alpha i plus beta j and this can be using a combination of alpha and beta you can create any vector lying within this 2d plane and this is the same 2d plane in which the vector i and vector j after transformation belongs to uh, but where is this 2D plane? Is this same as the XY 2D plane? No, this 2D plane, the vectors in this 2D plane will have one more additional dimension, the Z dimension. So this is why we are saying the transformation is happening from 2D space to 3D space. But the, the amount of space that these two vectors can span is still limited to 2D. So that is what that's what I have written here. A third dimension is added. You know where the I ends up, you know where the J ends up and uh, this these two new vectors can transform the entire 2D plane in the 3D space. Now let's look at another example, which is the uh, other case of a three by two matrix. So now we have a two by three matrix instead of a three by two matrix. So you have two rows, three columns, and again here you know that each column corresponds to where the original unit vectors land, and since here are three columns. There are originally three unit vectors, which are i, i cap, j cap, and k cap. So the first column of this two by three matrix is where the i lands after transformation. So this is, this we can denote as i trans i transformed. The second column is j transformed. These are not unit vectors, so you cannot draw the cap, but you can maybe draw like a vector symbol like this. And the third column is where the k after transformation ends up. So what does this mean? Uh, you can also see that these two, uh, these three vectors have only two dimensions. It has only x and y dimension. So x dimension, y dimension for the i vector, i the new i vector. So here I should not put the cap. Uh, I mean, this is where i lands, but this can this should be called as i transformed, something like that, right? So, but it does not have three dimensions. It has only two dimensions. But you know that the i j and k were originally like this 100010 zero, 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 zero. so this was uh, i cap this was j cap and this was k cap and they have three dimensions but after transformation those three vectors only have two dimensions so this is a transformation from 3d space into a 2d space and here the interesting thing to note is the original three vectors i cap j cap and k cap could span the entire 3d space but here after transformation these three vectors belong to the xy plane and uh, the third vector one of the third vectors can be represented as a linear combination of the other two vectors so for example um, here let's take uh, 1 4 and 3 2 as the basis vector so if we take 1 4 and 3 2 as the basis vectors uh, then the third vector is not linearly independent. It is dependent on the previous two vectors. So third vector is 2, 2, right? We could represent uh, this by solving an equation. Uh, 1, 4, 3, 2. Let's say this can be represented using, so basically alpha times this plus beta times this is equal to this. So alpha plus 3 beta equal to 2. Uh, 4 alpha plus 2 beta equal to 2 so we can subtract this and we get um, 3 alpha plus beta equal to 0 right uh, sorry minus 3 alpha plus beta equal to 0 so 3 alpha equal to beta that is 1 so alpha equal to beta by 3 basically so we can now write alpha in terms of beta so uh, this is 3 then beta by 3 plus 3 beta equal to 2 so 10 beta equal to 6 beta equal to 0.6 and alpha equal to beta by 3 which is 0 0.2 so I hope this gives the correct answer. Let me check 
so alpha plus uh, so alpha times one is zero point two plus uh, three times point six one point eight that is equal to two so you are you are getting two then alpha is point two point two times four is point eight plus one point two equal to two so yes so if you so basically the third vector two two can be uh, represented as a linear combination of the first two vectors where alpha equal to 0.2 and beta equal to 0.6 and you can do the, sa uh, the same thing you can represent this middle vector as a linear combination of the other two vectors so these are not three linearly independent vectors yes these are three depend uh, these are three vectors in which only a pair can be linearly independent so what does this mean again you are transforming from a 3d space into a 2d space right and in the 2D space, you have these uh, three vectors. I have drawn the three vectors somewhere here. Um, 1, 4, 3, 2, 2, 2. So 1, 4 is this. This is where uh, the transformed version of I lands. Then you have 3, 2 and 2, 2. So this is 3, 2. And this is 2, 2. So this is J after transformation. And this is K after transformation. But these three vectors span only the 2D XY, XY space. So this is a transformation from 3D space into a 2D space. Now, um, that is exactly what is written here as well. The three vectors who could span the entire 3D space after the transformation, they could only span the XY plane. Now here is another interesting example. Let's take a two by one matrix. So a two by one matrix means um, it has only one column. And this one column is the position of the um, of the vector, position of the original unit vector after transforming the space. So the original unit vector is in what dimension? The original unit vector is in one dimension because the original unit vector there is only one unit vector so if a particular space has only one unit vector it has only one dimension so here the transformation is happening from a line into the xy plane so here let's say um, we take something like this we take uh, so this two by one matrix can be multiplied by a one by one vector so let's say three by two this two by uh, this matrix is multiplying with a uh, with a vector like this then you have result as 9 6 so did you see what's happening here so here originally the vector had only one dimension and the vector was like this so 0 1 2 3 so the the vector that we were originally looking at in one dimension was along this line like this and after transformation what happened to this vector is this went to 9 over here and 6 so this vector got mapped into this so this is a this matrix this two by one matrix three comma two is a linear transformation from one dimensional space into two dimensional space. But um, since you have only one vector here, this vector can only span a one dimension, and which is that one dimension? It is this line. The after transformation, you can only span along a straight line. Although the transformation is into two D, you have only one vector one basis vector because in one dimension you had only one basis vector which was the i vector so this basically transforms the i vector into so what is i vector i vector in 1d is nothing but one so you are transforming the uh, the unit basis vector in one dimension into this coordinate 3 2 so 3 2 is here uh, this is 3 and this is 2 right so this is your uh, basis vector after transformation and in 2d this basis vector can only span along that one single line so although the transformation is increasing the dimensionality of the space it is not enabling you to span the entire 2d space so the span is not increasing span is still one 1d so that is the beauty of this two by one matrix you are you are projecting from a line into a 2d plane but you're spanning along a line in the in the 2d plane now what about one by two matrix this is an interesting case so here because this is a one by two matrix it has two columns this is the first column this is the second column but you can see that each column has only one dimension it does not have two or three dimensions what this means is you originally had two unit vectors i and j 
right? But they are getting transformed into uh, a one di- two one-dimensional vectors. So what happens to, so let's say one, two, this is the transformation matrix and this is one by two, right? Now this can multiply with a two by one matrix, sorry, two by one ve- uh, vector that is represented by a two by one matrix. And let's say my vector is three, two. Then if you multiply this matrix with this vector, the transformation that results from this is one times three plus two times two, which is three plus four, uh, seven. So this is just a, this is again like a vector, but after transformation, but it has only one dimension. So you are transforming this into this line represented by this. So this is seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is origin. So you are transforming this vector, which was originally in two dimensions. So it was one, two, three, one, two, like this. It was in 2D, but after applying this transformation M, you transform this vector from 2D into 1D. This transformation from uh, a lower dimensional space to higher dimensional space or from a higher to lower dimensional space is very commonly used in machine learning, especially in neural networks. So when you are multiplying with the weight matrix, the the previous layer, um, you might be transforming the previous set of inputs from a lower to higher dimensional space and sometimes back from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional space. So at the end of the day, the basic operations happening in neural network has very high significance to uh, transformations using non-square matrices. So that is the importance of having a very basic intuitive understanding of what's happening in the in the case of non-square matrices. And uh, although we talk in the language of rank, span, etc., the the mental picture that you should have should be that of what is happening to vectors when you when this matrix is acting upon those vectors and where are vectors present in uh, machine learning the input itself input to a neural network is in the form of a vector and where are matrices in uh, in the in machine learning you can have matrices representing certain kind of transformation as the weight matrix and then this will linearly transform the mm-hmm. vector into another space and then you may perform some non-linear operations as well. We will learn that in the later part of the course, of course. But here I just wanted to show you a basic intuition of these uh, non-square matrix transformations. This is very important and very common. So now this hopefully gives you a fairly good idea about uh, linear transformations completely. In the next lecture, we will explore how to do uh, inverse of matrices and what does this, what does it physically mean? So. Inverse calculations, we know we usually perform by calculating the determinant and we we can follow a certain uh, set of steps. But what does it actually mean with respect to linear transformations? Is inverse also another transformation or is it something else? In which cases inverse do not exist? What does it mean when determinant is zero? Why, Why cannot we find the inverse of a matrix? These are some questions that can have very intuitive answers rather than just mathematical answers. So we'll explore those in the next lecture. And we will see how those things will help you when you finally learn machine learning. So thank you so much for listening to this lecture and stay with me and uh, you will learn about uh, this intuitive understanding of uh, some, some more fundamental concepts in linear algebra for machine learning in the upcoming lectures. So see you again next time. Take care until then. Bye.